cheese is very good. And if you disagree, well, <laughs> you're just factually incorrect. However, one cheese, the oldest cheese, stands tall above the rest. And that cheese is Greek feta cheese. Feta is Greek brine cheese made from sheep's milk and or goat's milk. It's a soft, holeless, and skinless white chunk of tangy and salty goodness. Other than an olive, I would personally describe this as the most stereotypically Mediterranean tasting food I've had. Which, you know, is, is saying something compared to the olive. Because it's an olive. But, what's brine cheese you might ask? Cheese aged in brine, get your question answered. Uh, but to be more specific, brine is essentially just salt water with a high concentration of salt. Anyway, the history of cheese making is a bit iffy since cheese has been around forever, and most cultures have some form of cheese unique to them, but the earliest known documentation of all cheese was in the 8th century BCE in Homer's Odyssey, when it was accidentally discovered by the Cyclops Polyphemus. Polyphemus had bags of animal stomachs he was using to carry sheep's milk, as one does. One day, to his surprise, the milk in these bags had taken a solid form because, <laughs> cheese curdles, stupid cyclops. Polyphemus, the mad lad, decided to taste this strange substance, and found that it tasted quite good. It's thought that Greeks in this time period prepare cheese in a similar fashion to the infamous cyclops. The cheese at this time is essentially the ancestor to feta, which, in my opinion, is a crazy awesome title to bear. I wish I was the ancestor to feta, but alas. Feta cheese itself was first described during the Byzantine era by Michael Sayos, a Byzantine Greek monk, savant, writer, philosopher, imperial quarter, historian, and music theorist, which, what a resume, honestly, that's pretty crazy. Sayos lived from around 1017 to 1078-ish, but as all things old and lost to time, who really knows when he died? People kind of argue it a little bit, but who cares? In reality, the important part is uh, feta was described sometime during the 10th century. During this time, feta was called prosfitos, which translates to fresh or recent. So for all I know, my love of feta cheese is simply a result of the recency bias because I had some... Uh, before writing the script. <laughs> the news of the Greek's cheese continued to spread when the Italian traveler Pietro Casola visited Herculeone in Crete in 1494. Pietro spread the word of the Greek's method of producing and storing cheese in brine, which earned him a few little specks of clout here and there. In the 17th century, Greeks began to use the name feta for their cheese, which means sliced. This is because of their tendency to cut the cheese into thin slices for transportation, storage, and consumption, because that's pretty efficient, and how else are you supposed to do those things? Cool, so feta now has its name. But when did feta really begin to spread across the world? <laughs> you sure ask a lot of questions. Greece has had many waves of mass immigration, which, cough cough, led to their culture spreading. The Greek War for Independence, also known as the Greek Revolution, occurred from 1821 to 1829 as the Greeks fought for independence from the Ottoman Empire. After this, the Greek economy kind of died a little, leading many Greeks to leave for the U.S. in order to make some money. In the aftermath of World War I, from 1921 to 1924, more Greeks traveled to the U.S. These luckos got to experience the Roaring Twenties right before the Great Depression and World War II. What a time to be alive! And then, as you all know probably, World War II left Europe in a bit of a mess. Hitler went on a little bit of a spending spree, spending the lives of millions of people and then himself. This resulted in Europe being destroyed economically and physically. Many people were looking for a better situation, and, as people tend to do when faced with hardship, the Greeks, being of the subset people, migrated to the Western world in search of a better life. With all this migration, Greek culture spread just a wee bit, and feta grew in popularity. Real question time, though, why is only Greek brine cheese considered feta cheese, when a lot of cultures have a type of brine cheese? Well, that's a great question. You really did good with that one, you point. So to answer that, let's discuss how feta cheese is made. Feta cheese is traditionally produced by taking milk that's curdled, straining it to remove the large yucky bits, salting it, and then aging it for around two months in wooden barrels filled with scrumptious, scrumptious brine. What type of milk should you use? 
Oh, you poor, poor fool. You use sheep's milk. I mentioned that in the first minute of the video. You should have been paying attention. Well, more specifically, according to EU legislation, up to 30% goat's milk can also be used. But only if the sheep and the goat the milk is taken from are from the same location. A sheep in England and a goat in France can't mix their milks to create feta cheese. No, such a cheese would be a disgusting feta alternative. In fact, the title feta can only be given to brine cheese produced in Greece. These qualifications all must be met for the cheese to receive a protected designation of origin, or a PDO. A PDO is a type of geographical designation created in 1992 to protect the original cultural ways of making food. So, for example, if you make feta with cow milk, that feta does not get designated as a PDO and your Greek friends scoff at you. Anyway, feta cheese truly has a long history. From Cyclopses to Byzantines to modern people, feta cheese was and is loved by many and has become a Greek staple in culture. Also, feta is the national cheese of Greece. Which is crazy, because I didn't know countries had national cheeses until researching this topic. Well, that's it. You're now cursed with all the feta knowledge that I have, because I got bored and decided to research this. Have fun telling all your friends the history of feta cheese, because they'll be like, why, why do you know that? <laughs> Alright, get outroed, bye.